Hi, everybody. I'm Bob Bowman, Editor-in-Chief of Supply Chain Brain, and I want to welcome you to this special presentation on unlocking the power of your supply chain through digital transformation. First in a series of webinars in 2022 on five keys to unlocking supply chain value in a time of crisis, presented by Gartner in Supply Chain Brain. Quickly want to remind you that there will be a question and answer session at the end of this presentation. Audience members are encouraged to submit their questions at any time during the presentation by clicking on that Q&A icon at the bottom of your screen. I also want to remind everyone to save the date for this year's Gartner Supply Chain Symposium and Expo, the world's most important gathering of CSCOs and supply chain executives, June 6th through 8th, 2022 in Orlando, Florida, September 27th through 29th, 2022 in London. More on that in a bit. But now, with the last two years of supply disruptions, including the pandemic, Suez Canal clog and general gridlock, a lot of companies have taken their eye off the ball when it comes to digital transformation of their supply chains. That's too bad because if they'd had that in the first place, they would have been better positioned to address or even preempt those disruptions. So today, we're gonna to talk about the critical importance of digital supply chain transformation to companies' long-term success and viability. Delaying or deferring is no longer an option. So now I'd like to introduce today's presenter. Joanne Joliet is a vice president analyst at Gartner for Supply Chain, with her primary research coverage, including supply chain strategy, digital transformation, and innovation. Joanne brings 23 years of business experience in technology, retail, and supply chain, where she led massive enterprise-wide digital transformation efforts for major retail, technology, and consultancy organizations. With that, I'm going to pass it off to jo uh, Joanne Joliet. Joanne, take it away. Awesome, Bob. Thank you so much for having me. And thanks, everybody, for taking the time out of your day uh, to discuss digital transformation in the supply chain. You know, as I prepared for this session, I, I reflected on digital transformation and the challenges we're having with the supply chains today. And it occurred to me that it's 2022, and we've been talking about digital transformation for the better part of two decades. And I thought, why is that? Why are companies still struggling to digitally transform their supply chains? Why is digital transformation in the supply chain so elusive? And I think one of the challenges is that most people over the last several years, really decade, have been focused on the technology related to digital transformation and not true digital transformation that enables new business models. You can see from Gartner's definition here that digital transformation means exploiting the latest digital technologies and practices to create a robust new digital business model. Over the last two years, Bob, as you had just mentioned, that disruption has illuminated the gaps and deficiencies that we've seen in supply chains globally. Many of those global supply chains and leading companies would have said, yes, we've digitally transformed. We are at a maturity state only to be uh, corrected during the last uh, 24 months of disruption. So the urgency for true digital transformation has never been greater given the ongoing disruption and challenges we continue to face. One of the challenges is that many have confused digitalization with digital transformation. And I'd like to share a simple example with you to help you and help you know, your colleagues and, and leadership really understand the difference. We, we all know what a telephone is. Our telephones and our smartphones ha have really become appendages to our, our human bodies. Um, many of us on the call remember the phone on the far left, uh, you know, with the rotary dial in the cradle uh, and the frustration of being tethered to a wall to have a, a private phone conversation, generally in the company of our family. As the telephone has evolved, it really had become more digitalized over the years. Uh, certainly the keypads were introduced, the digital formats and, and things like that. Even early mobile phones really just it, uh, advanced telecom from a, from a talk and then even a text perspective. It wasn't until the introduction of the smartphone where true digital transformation actually occurred. Now, certainly the, the communication was advanced in that, 
But that smartphone created an ecosystem of other partners, which enabled how we change every aspect of our daily life. It created new business models. It changed how certainly we communicate, how we shop, how we bank, how we travel and check in for a flight, our health every aspect of our life. And again, the key to digital transformation versus digi digitalization is the building of that ecosystem to allow greater collaboration in new business models. One of the challenges for digital transformation in the supply chain has been the, the financial investment and ongoing investment uh, for digital transformation. The base case for digital transformation in the supply chain certainly um, is clear. By through digital transformation, you can absolutely increase revenue, you can reduce your costs, you can improve your cash flow, certainly by putting uh, the customer experience and elevating that at the center of that. But this is really just the base case for supply chain digital transformation. The, the financials alone should support it. When you think about on average, we're looking at about 20% reduction in procurement costs, a 50% reduction in supply chain costs, an increase in revenue of roughly 10% and increase in the compound annual growth rate of over 10% as well. But again, these benefits are no longer enough uh, to support uh, the, the business case for digital supply chain transformation. Once once you look past the financial optimization, the benefits of supply chain transformation are, are the following. It's the ability to have data-driven intelligent insights, to increase your speed, scalability, and agility, to increase your ability to track, trace, and authenticate orders and products, to advanced automation, to, to enable greater collaboration, and really most importantly is to position you and your supply chain to be future ready, obviously for optimal conditions as well as the disruption that is ongoing. As a reminder, this webinar is presented by the Gartner Supply Chain Exposium and Expo, the world's most important gathering of CSCOs and supply chain executives. June 6th through 8th in Orlando, Florida, September 27th through 29th in London. Hear more from Joanne and many other Gartner experts like her at this year's symposium. And remember to register with the code GARTSCB for exclusive discounts. Now I'd like to turn it back to Joanne. Thanks, Bob. So let's talk about digital supply chain maturity and moving from digitalization to true digital transformation. Gartner has a supply chain maturity scale that scales from level one to level five with the Y axis uh, given the perspective of moving from a tactical position to a more strategic position. And then along the, the X axis, uh, having a mindset or focus that's moving from internal to an external view. As we help our clients progress through uh, the maturity scale, um, generally we see many organizations at the level two to three state right now. But let's start with level one. Level one is where your activities are still siloed within the organization, whether that's planning, sourcing, manufacturing, uh, the metrics, the KPIs, the process, all of that is really housed and contained within each of the functions within the organization. As the supply chain progresses from level one to level two, they achieve functional scale, but those activities are still within that function, but expanded technologically or potentially geographically across that function, meaning all manufacturing sites at this point are all operating the same, but manufacturing is still uh, functionally siloed compared to the other functions within the organization. As we progress from level two to level three, that's where supply chains achieve cross-functional integration. That means that the supply chain is now integrated with other functions within the organization like HR, IT, uh, um, and even finance. So there's sharing of data, sharing of collaboration and processes, um, and again, creating greater collaboration for internal cross-functional organization. As supply chains mature from level three to level four, the collaboration uh, is introduced is external, um, meaning partners within your supply chain. 
That extends processes, uh, uh, goals, strategy, compliance, and metrics outside of the organization. And then level five is where supply chains achieve ecosystem orchestration, meaning uh, partners are included as they were in, in level four, but now it's partners of partners. And as I mentioned in the, the, the smartphone example, that ecosystem is really what enables those uh, new business models uh, founded on a core of data and analytics. Now, having the ability to have uh, visibility into your entire ecosystem, your, your, your organization, your partner's organizations, your partner's partners, allows you to see and sense data elements um, before they become seismic. So if there's an issue with a supplier four levels down, your ability to sense that and respond to that is certainly much faster uh, and, and potentially even preemptive for that. So obviously to unlock digital transformation within the supply chain, the supply chain maturity must advance well beyond the level two or level three where many organizations sit today up to level five, which enables that ecosystem collaboration. When you look at an ecosystem, this gives you a, a little vantage point of, of everything that's included. And certainly this is not exhaustive. Um, the customer experience, again, it remains in the center of that, but it allows you to be connected and all the entities within that ecosystem to be connected uh, together one-to-one um, -one rather than through functions. And so whether that's your manufacturing, your employees, your customers, your partners, uh, certainly IoT devices, uh, again, creates that uh, central repository of data and analytics that allow you to contribute to and consume from, again, in order to be more predictive and preemptive of uh, normal operating conditions and absolutely disruption. This ecosystem enables you to be future ready overall, stay competitive with your competition and potentially um, certainly viable uh, in the moment. Another reason why this is so important and why this can no longer wait is, I wanna share a data point with you from a recent partner survey. 83% of CEOs responding to a past survey had stated that they are making their businesses more digital. Unfortunately, those same CEOs also stated that they don't believe their CSCOs are ready to support digital business. Now that disconnect is a serious concern, but it's also legitimate. Without digital supply chain transformation, the overall business model will fail. Again, I, I have a deep retail background and I um, certainly appreciate the, the retail aspect of customer service uh, in that moment. But from a supply chain perspective, it doesn't matter what you're selling to your customer if you can't get it to them. And so as we look at the overall supply chain operating model, which requires true digital transformation, that is imperative in order to support the larger business model of your organization. I'd like to take a moment to tell you about the sponsors of today's presentation. Texas is a global provider of supply chain solutions that equip the borderless enterprise for growth. Spanning healthcare, retail, and distribution industries, Texas delivers dynamic and powerful solutions for management of warehousing, distribution, and transportation, point of use supply, retail orders, finance, and analytics. If your organization is looking to achieve digital transformation success, move forward confidently with Texas to equip your supply chain greatness. Learn more at texas.com. Vecna Robotics is an intelligent material handling technology company engineered to keep goods moving. Its award-winning autonomy solutions choreograph flexible, uninterrupted work between autonomous mobile robots, labor, facilities, and systems with 24-7, 365 command center monitoring, proprietary obstacle avoidance, and always-on machine learning. Beckner's commitment to keep the supply chain running is transforming Fortune 500 companies across industries in auto manufacturing, retail sales, transportation and logistics, and more. Go to VecnaRobotics.com to learn more. As a trusted partner in creating future-ready supply chains, 
Vibronics helps companies unlock the value of connected data and accelerate digital transformation across the enterprise. With deep domain experience, Vibronics solves data fragmentation through strategic consulting, analytics services, command center, and AI-powered platform solutions to expand visibility, transform operations, and accelerate predictive decision-making. Reduce the friction and maximize the value of your digital supply chain investments with Vibronics. Learn more at vibronics.com. And now, back to Joanne Joliet. Joanne? Thanks, Bob. Great. So let's talk about unlocking the supply chain value through digital transformation with some examples. I'd like to share with you uh, the hype cycle for supply chain strategy. Now, some of you are already familiar with Gartner's hype cycle. Some of you may not be. What's different about this hype cycle, and I'll just note that we have yet to publish our 2022, which is why I'm sharing 2021. Um, what's different about this hype cycle is that not only does it include the technologies, but it also includes competencies, frameworks, operating models, and organizational models. When you think about digital transformation in the supply chain, it will require people, process, and technology. And these capabilities are required to unlock the value and the power of your supply chain. Technology certainly like digital twins and blockchain and robotic process automation. I don't want to minimize those, but the technologies alone will not transform your supply chain. You'll need competencies like machine learning and data literacy. You'll need frameworks like supply chain segmentation, ESG uh, goals, network design. You'll need operating model strategies, potentially like modular operating models, solution supply chains, and even circular economies. And then lastly, the organizational models that you'll need, centers of excellence and agile teams uh, in order to, again, unlock uh, the power of your supply chain. I'd like to share some examples with you today. Now, some of these examples, potentially all of these examples will be known to you, but I'd ask you to think about them with the lens of supply chain digital transformation and how they're different. This example is one that we saw in the heat of the pandemic as we as a globe were working to produce ventilators for those who had fallen ill with COVID. The Ventilator Challenge UK Consortium included 14 companies who came together, including Airbus, Ford, McLaren, Siemens, Rolls-Royce, and several others that not only shared manufacturing space, um, but certainly shared their engineers and thought leadership to produce ventilators um, very, very quickly. Now, again, this is an example of digital transformation in their supply chains, which enabled that, that real-time collaboration with partners. Now, we all know how challenging it is for a, a, a manufacturing line to go down and then come back up. What is remarkable to me in this moment is that all of these companies were able to stop production of their normal products retool, reskill their associates essentially overnight in order to collaborate. And I have with partners on the slide, but ultimately they're collaborating with competitors. And that's a very powerful relationship, um, certainly again, in, in the moment of global health and, and preserving lives. But without transforming their digital supply chains, they would never have been in a position in order to um, come together and, and do something so great for, for us as a globe. The next example I'd like to share with you is Unilever. Unilever is leveraging digital twins. So one of the technologies that I mentioned within our hype cycle um, across several other plants to understand operations and then help them utilize materials more efficiently and reduce waste overall. By connecting their digital assets, um, excuse me, their physical assets with digital technology and IoT, they are able to understand uh, real-time conditions and be able to forecast and scenario plan for changes before those changes ever occur. Again, this is, improves the speed and the quality of their decision-making. Other organizations are also using digital twins. We've seen digital twins leveraged within governments to understand traffic patterns and congestion. We've seen digital twins leveraged in healthcare uh, to replicate a human heart before it is 
uh, inserted with a defibrillator. And we certainly have seen it within um, air, the airline industry for airplane engines to understand wear and tear uh, on the fins um, before we are actually up in the air. So again, the digital transformation that Unilever has been able to achieve within their supply chain as well as the others that I just mentioned are a great example of creating that ecosystem that enables real-time data and analytics to be preemptive and predictive of upcoming scenarios. My last example is, is one here uh, that's close to home for me in the US. And, and this is a big box store target as you can, as you can discern from the, the signage. Um, and this is about creating new business models. What, what Target did ahead of the pandemic, and, and Walmart as well, uh, not to exclude them, but they worked on creating an ecosystem that would connect their digital enterprise, their, their online and mobile uh, commerce solutions to their physical assets, uh, their stores, um, as well as external uh, collaborators like customers and partners and other technology to enable curbside delivery. Now, what's great about this, and if you haven't used this or Walmart or other uh, providers who offer something similar, it will change your life. And certainly uh, the customer experience was the driver for this. Um, as you place your order, the geofence recognizes that you've crossed the threshold and an associate is actually already out into the parking lot uh, to deliver your order touchless to the back of your car without issue. What I'd like you to realize is that they did this well ahead of the pandemic. They started this in 2018 and extended it into 2019. Walmart and other big box stores did the same. The point of this is digital transformation in your supply chain cannot wait for a crisis. Those cri the crises we see today will continue um, and this positioned Target and others to be uh, in a much more competitive uh, position through the pandemic and really accelerate through those challenges, um, resulting in record level perform financial performance levels. Here's some examples of uh, other companies that Gartner has assessed within our uh, top 25 in Masters of Supply Chain. Um, some of you may see your own logos on this slide. Now, what's interesting and what I want you to take away from this slide is while these are the leaders and the best, uh, uh, given some of the use cases and examples that they've been able to achieve within their supply chain and digital transformation, these companies do not stop transforming. They do not stop innovating. They do not stop evolving. And even if they have achieved that ecosystem collaboration of level five, they continue to advance that with additional partners and partners of partners. So if you're looking for some good examples and some uh, uh, companies to potentially emulate, this is a great list from which to start. As I mentioned before, the frequency and magnitude of disruption is not discontinuing. This is a very quick blurb of really what's happened over the last three years, and, and again, is not exhaustive. It includes factors, uh, macro disruption factors of natural disasters, such as fires and floods. Um, it includes political unrest, which has created supply chain disruption and conflict. We're seeing that today. You just simply have to turn on the news to, to see the latest. Uh, it includes security breaches, which remain a, a top priority for CIOs and, and other CXOs, um, as well as, as accidents, unfortunately. My point here is that the disruption will continue and manifest in, in different uh, obstructions and challenges with, that will affect our global supply chains. Your supply chain must be digitally transformed, again, in order to sense and respond more quickly or potentially even preempt that disruption altogether. So as we, as we move into our question and answer session in just a second, I'd like you to reflect on these questions and the, and the examples I just shared with you. Is your organization and your supply chain able today to collaborate with your greatest competitor? Are you able to turn on business models more quickly? Can you exploit new and emerging te technologies? And can you make decisions much more quickly and accurately based on the data that you have? I think for many, many companies, the answer is no. And that's okay. That just means that there is a great and tremendous opportunity ahead of you to truly digitally transform your supply chains, 
not just for optimal operations, but certainly uh, in the moment of disruption. As others have said before, don't let a good crisis go to waste. Um, so I look forward to uh, your use cases and including them in our upcoming research. With that, I'd like to thank you for your time and take any questions. Thank you very much, Joanne. And we do indeed have some audience questions already posed. And even as we are answering them, we have some time. So audience continue to submit those questions just by clicking on that Q&A icon at the bottom of your screen. Okay, Joanne, you're in the hot seat. This question says, any recommended tools that companies can use? And by tools, I'm assuming that the questioner is referring to categories of IT solutions, things like that. Uh, what, what would you say to that? Well, cer certainly there are, right? Whether whether it's true technology tools or even frame sets, so or frameworks, you know, uh, you know. Hopefully, you are uh, a client, and, and we can walk you through our tool set. Um, but certainly, assessing your overall maturity, uh, identifying where those gaps are and where the opportunities are for that that technical um, increase of investment to to achieve that aptitude is really key. Um, again, it, as you look at the Gartner hype cycle, the technologies on there are, are certainly um, a good place to start and a good litmus test to assess against your current uh, technology portfolio and tool set. Um, but again, depending on your digital maturity and what your outcome base is for that digital maturity uh, will really inform which specific tools you'll need. And if, if it's not me, there are other Gartner analysts who can uh, speak to uh, technology um, and the platforms very specific to, to vendors. Thank you. Mm -hmm. To build the base to implement digital supply chain systems, what steps can companies take to move up the maturity ladder? Yeah, certainly. Again, understanding where you are today is step one. Um, and that will inform really, again, those gaps and opportunities. Uh, from a digital business platform that includes not just your systems, your partner systems, your customer systems, uh, and IoT and other devices, the foundation of that really is the core of data and analytics. And in my opinion, your ability to, again, consume the data and analytics that is generated by that ecosystem, allow, allowing yourself to identify patterns or lack of patterns is really what's going to separate those who excel um, versus those who struggle. And so from a, from a starting point, certainly you'll, you'll advance on the, the technologies that are included on our hype cycle. Um, but really the foundation to that is the core of data and analytics and starting that as you um, either are starting your digital transformation or certainly accelerating it through now that uh, we can refocus after the last two years. This question says, where can I see more detail behind those financial optimizations that you showed early on in the presentation? I wonder if you could point back to some of the research on that that you've done and some background perhaps? We can, there, those slides are sourced. Um, so we're happy to share those sources as well. Okay, cool. Here's a common question. In what way can blockchain be used to improve the supply chain processes? Certainly blockchain is, um, is being utilized by, by some of the supply chain leaders I shared on, on our leaders and master slide. Um, blockchain is being used in a variety of ways to you know, certainly establish uh, authentication of products, provenance of products, um, you know, enabling faster transactions between parties within uh, the supply chain. Um, we are you know, seeing companies, I mentioned Walmart earlier, who are using blockchain and computer vision uh, to route produce much more quickly through their distribution centers um, based on uh, the computer vision images of how ripe that produce is and to overall eliminate waste um, and, and you know, millions and millions of dollars related to that. So again, blockchain is being used in, in a variety of ways across the supply chain uh, to track, trace, authenticate, uh, handle financial transactions and a variety of other reasons. On the hype cycle, I'd imagine it's not very far <laughs> at this point, but it's getting there. Fair. Uh, yeah. Um, this questioner says, can you speak to how to sell our C-suite executive team? We have leadership that thinks that standard ERP, enterprise resource planning, is the way. <laughs> how do we overcome the thought that IT knows everything and play the ERP card as digital because it's in the cloud? Great question. 
that there really is a great question. Um, and I, I get this question a lot about, you know, what's the ROI of digital transformation? And that's why I stated, you know, those financial metrics are really the base case. Um, what I would ask you and ask your leadership to think about is what is the risk of not doing this? And the risk of not doing this is overall viability, as I, as I showed on that, that business model slide and how the supply chain uh, you know, certainly supports the, the overall corporate uh, mission, vision, value, and objectives. And, and that, um, you know, that's a, that's a non-argument. If, if you're not going to remain viable, um, then, then you absolutely have to do this. And so looking at the financial, certainly, again, the ability to create new business models, be able to survive and thrive in the moment of ongoing disruption um, and really remain viable is the key to that. We, we know first and foremost that culture is the greatest impediment to digital transformation, including transformation within the supply chain. So top-down leadership um, and support is paramount. Good stakeholder engagement is, is paramount as well uh, to drive that cultural change um, and make sure that everybody is aware of the process, the benefits, and really how this will position you uh, to, to be much more healthier um, in the future. Thank you. What are your thoughts on increasing use of contract manufacturing? Yeah, I just about lost that one. Hold on. Okay. And taking more outside your internal manufacturing capabilities, what does the future look like to move this function outside the organization? Well, it certainly gives you an opportunity for agility, um, managing partners that can help support your ability to scale both up and down is critical um, and being able to have that flexibility um, again, will only increase in, in use. So uh, again, as you, as you look at your supply chain, you look at contract manufacturing, how does that enable you to, um, to respond much more quickly uh, and, and certainly scale um, if and when it's needed? This next question kind of bounces off of the one about how do you convince the C-suite, but it's the larger question of how you use change management generally mm -hmm. to push your organization toward the digital transformation journey. That's a big topic. We could spend an hour on that, but okay. uh, what can you tell me in the next, in, in about 30 seconds? Joanne? Sure, absolutely. That is a great question. And, and uh, similar to laying the foundation of data and analytics from the start, change management has to start from the beginning of the transformation as well. Many companies make the mistake of leaving change management to the end or closer to implementation and deployment. Um, unfortunately, that, that is a, a big mistake or they'll think that change management is mere, it merely just training. Um, change management, again, has to start from the beginning. It has to be led with uh, leadership and stakeholder support um, and help your entire organization from the CEO down to um, your associates manage themselves through the change curve so they understand the benefits for the organization, how it's going to impact and benefit them, and overall what that outcome is as they achieve the milestones along the way. Thank you. When should a company build their own solutions versus joining partner ecosystems, what Gartner calls a multi-enterprise supply chain business network? Yeah, great, great question. Um, you know, when, when I hear that, I think about, I think about the grocery apps like uh, Instacart and other grocery apps that enabled grocers who were incredibly behind from a digital commerce perspective, get online very quickly, certainly pre-pandemic and then through the pandemic. Um, that's a great example of when to join uh, to achieve a capability that you can't um, build yourself very quickly. What, what we're seeing now is some of the challenges that those grocers are having with, uh, with those relationships, uh, reducing margin and overall revenue to the point where now those companies are looking at building out their own digital commerce uh, in um, capabilities within that space. So the question on when to build versus when to when to uh, you know join really comes to speed for for many. Um, and again, what what is your opportunity and what is your skill set in house to be able to build? Are you even in that position, or do you have to rely on that partnership uh, for that at least in the short term, um, if not the longer term, if if that's um, right for your organization and aligns to your 
core capabilities. Yeah, I mean, it depends on company size and industry mm -hmm. and expertise. So many different factors there to think about. How do you coach? There's a lot of this human personal stuff I'm liking in these questions today. How do you coach supply chain leaders to think about using the cloud as a key enabler of digital business transformation? But come on, is that even an issue anymore? I mean, an interesting question. It, it is. Sometimes, uh, you know, the financial governance is is dictating uh, movement to the cloud or, or accelerating um, uh, you know, the, uh, the investments that have been made, the, the, um, I'm, I want to say decommission, that's not even the right word, um, but accelerating, the, um, the, 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 excuse me, the, the uh, investments that they've made. One, one of the challenges that I see with the cloud specifically is uh, the ownership of data. Um, and again, being able to build that ecosystem uh, for yourself and partners really is predicated on that, that uh, ability to have that centralized data and analytics. Um, that, that alone should be the business case in order for companies to be able to, again, create those partnerships and move farther and faster. Um, you know, a little research, a little understanding, you'll understand that the data actually in the cloud is very safe. It's still safe uh, with collaborators and, and even competitors doing that. There are ways to, to keep that secure. Um, and so really from, from a movement to the cloud generally just requires a little bit of understanding and education uh, for those who are not as close to the technology as the technology specialists. Well, here's a good follow-up to that. This questioner wants to know just how important is the migration of core applications to the cloud to support digital supply chain transformation? In other words, can companies start a digital transformation with their existing on-premises solutions? That's a good question. I mean, certainly we're looking at digital transformation in the supply chain and that in establishing that, that collaborative ecosystem that relies on real-time data and analytics. So if you don't have the ability to have real-time data and analytics because of those solutions housed on-prem, that, that will eventually limit you. Um, there are companies, obviously, as they're progressing through that uh, supply chain maturity scale, um, are still leveraging their solutions that are on-prem. Um, and again, the limitation of that is the data and the, and the timeliness of that data. The survey mentions it shows that chief supply chain officers aren't ready to a large extent. Is it because of lack of experience on their part? Other factors within or beyond their control? What's the reason? I, um, you know, I think there are a variety of reasons. I think part of it is obviously competing investment priorities. Uh, number one, I think, you know, up until really the last 24 months, uh, supply chains were operating pretty well. I mean, we had gotten really good at just in time and, um, you know, other capabilities to, uh, you know, to extend our supply chains and, and increase speed and overall agility. Um, but that, that overall true jump to digital transformation from digitalization is required and that investment's required. It's, it's a little bit of a, a catch-22 for the CEOs to say, you know, I'm moving to digital from an overall uh, company perspective, um, but I don't have confidence in my CSEOs. Well, have you invested in the CSEOs in your supply chain? And so that really, again, um, seals the business case for future investment in digital supply chain transformation. This question is asking us to link the whole issue of digital transformation with ESG or environmental, social, and governance transparency. How do you see the importance of ESG transparency in the supply chain? How can this be tracked by digital technology? And then in parentheses, we're back at blockchain solutions, but other ways too. You know, it's a great question. Um, you know, through the pandemic, ESG has really taken a backseat to, to obviously what, what we as a globe needed to accomplish from a, a health and, and human services perspective. You know, before the pandemic, the war on plastic was, you know, at the forefront of all of our minds. You, you could not walk into a restaurant and ask for a straw. Um, you'd be given a paper straw if you were given a straw at all. And then fast forward a couple months into March 2020, if you wanted a straw, 
you could get as many straws as you wanted um, in, in, in the light of sanitation. So as, as we move past the pandemic, as sustainability and ESG becomes more of a focus um, and moves back into more of a focus, you know, certainly the supply chain will, will play a key uh, role in that. Um, part, some of that that we're seeing now in order to sidestep the disruption is certainly the shortening of supply chain and, and trying to get product closer to the company. Uh, customer, um, you know, that has a benefit of a reduced carbon footprint. You know, certainly the track and trace and authentication that you had mentioned in your, your uh, blockchain uh, comment at the end of the question, um, certainly is it can be done through blockchain or certainly other technologies as well uh, to support, you know, good social practices and understanding, um, you know, how that's promoting overall uh, welfare of others around the globe as well. There are lots of opportunities to make the business case for digital supply chain transformation with the benefit of being, uh, you know, ESG uh, objectives, um, but certainly also accomplishes uh, the base case of increased revenue, reduction of costs, greater customer service as well. Thank you. What role does digital supply chain transformation play in striking the right balance between agility and speed on one hand and cost on the other? being agile, having extra capacity to support sudden spurts of demand versus additional costs incurred due to underutilized capacity in the system? Where does digital, digitalization or digi digital transformation, I should say, come into that whole picture? It, it, it gives you the opportunity to, to take any path that's right, right? So again, going back to the digital twin example and running those scenario planners before they actually manifest themselves in, in, in uh, that manufacturing example with Unilever, is, is one way to look at it. And so digital transformation enables you, again, uh, to have the ability to scale up or scale down. Without that, you're, you're kind of stuck in the water. Um, digital transformation ena enables that ecosystem of partners so that you can call on them if and when you need them or potentially push them back when, when you don't. So again, digital transformation, going back to the benefits that uh, are on that slide beyond financial optimization of the agility, scalability, flexibility, the data and insights, um, all of that are really the, the reason for, for true digital transformation. We've talked uh, earlier about making the case generally for digital transformation, but I guess this more specific question is about is financial in nature. How do I justify the ongoing and significant investment required for true digital supply chain transformation? Yeah, absolutely. I apologize. I have a, a dog that just started to bark downstairs. No, so he was apologies. invited to ask questions, Joanne. He's perfectly welcome. <laughs> oh, don't, don't tell her that. Um, <laughs> So for, for the digital investment, again, going back to um, the, the numbers that I shared with you, and, and again, happy to provide those sources, but it really comes down to remaining viable. So, you know, certainly digital transformation pre-pandemic was about being ahead of the competition. Um, you know, that really just kind of enabled you to be, to just be you know, the fastest of the snails, if you will. Uh, the, the digital transformation we're talking about today that's required is going to enable you and your company to remain viable. And um, unless you do that, uh, unfortunately, it will be a slow death. And we, we've seen other companies falter over, over the last 24 months. Um, and those who have cited, you know, we, we can't stay in business because of COVID. Well, COVID is, is a cause, but COVID's not the reason. They didn't invest at the proper clip uh, in order to remain, again, agile and flexible through a moment of disruption. Um, and if, if COVID truly was the reason, everybody would be out of business. And so again, digital transformation, uh, you know, really comes down to remaining viable. It, the last digital transformation um, I, I led and was involved in, we, we got a significant amount of pushback because the, the first wave of investment was about $700 million US. And again, just the first wave. And that was a lot to swallow uh, for our leadership. Um, but then I, I took a look back at the financials of the last 10 years of the company. And then level of investment that had been made was so little that if you actually had made the digital transformation investment over those past 10 years, that $700 million would have been much less. And so when you look at, again, the ongoing investment required to remain viable, 
you can't do it in just spurts. This needs to be an ongoing investment. And going back to uh, the Gartner supply chain uh, uh, leaders and masters, you know, those are great examples of companies who have created a clip of investment that, in, that enables constant digital transformation. One would hope that current events justify it just by themselves, but maybe that's not always the case in all slower moving organizations. That kind of leads me to this next question, and that is what's the greatest impediment to digital transformation that prevents success? Yeah, I, I mentioned this earlier, and it really is the culture. Um, you know, digital transformation is people, process, and technology. The technology is the easiest part of the digital transformation. I won't say it's easy but I will say it's the easiest. And so getting the people and the processes aligned in order to, again, enable those new business models and that ecosystem collaboration um, are the most challenging. And that requires, again, top-down support from your executive leadership, uh, true stakeholder engagement, accountability from stakeholders. So oftentimes, you know, the you know, stakeholders may view supply chain as, as a service to them versus a true partner. Um, and so that dynamic and that relationship really needs to change in order for the whole organization, not just the, the supply chain, but the whole organization to truly digitally transform. Supply chain digital transformation requires people, process, and technology. Which is the most critical? They all are. They all are. And that, that's- I was afraid you were going to say that. <laughs> <laughs> I know, what an answer, right? They yeah. all are. But they all have to be moving together. You can't work on the technology and then doing, then work on the processes or start with the process or engineering and then figure out how to get your people up to speed and do change management at the end. Um, they are all equally important. As I said just a second ago, the technology is the easiest, but it's not easy. But the three aspects of people, process, and technology for digital transformation need to be moving through the digital transformation and that change curve together. Okay, here is an all-inclusive question that I want to ask you, uh, Joanne, and a lot of people would want to know, given the complexity of this topic, just, just how, how we go about doing this, and that is, where do we start? Or how do we accelerate if we've already begun but stalled as we diverted our focus due to the pandemic? Yeah, absolutely. I think I think a lot of companies have found themselves in a in a in a pause situation of, as they've diverted to address the pandemic. Certainly, leveraging uh, you know a, a reduction in staff and 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 overall um, you know changing of the environment. So where do you start? First and foremost, you have to know where you are. And where you were before the pandemic could be very different where you are today, even if nothing's happened between that. So really looking at uh, you know, your digital maturity and understanding if are you still operating in siloed functions? Have you advanced your functional collaboration ac across you know, geographies? Are you, are you uh, collaborating with partners externally or have you really achieved ecosystem collaboration? I'm pretty sure most, most of the people, given, um, given my conversations with clients and others, are still in that two to three range. So understanding where you are today, revitalizing and resurrecting that business case to support supply chain digital transformation, not just based on the financial optimization metrics, which we, we all know, but really looking at how will digital transformation in your supply chain become a springboard to, again, exploit those technologies and enable new business processes, processes and new business models uh, to allow you to, again, advance your company, advance your offering to customers, and it puts you in a position uh, to, again, operate um, in excellent conditions as well as op operate uh, during disruption. That is some fantastic guidance on a very complex question and a very complex issue. And I'm so glad that you were able to shine a light on all of this for us today, Joanne, especially since the word digitization, digitalization, digital transformation are bandied about so often without explaining what they entail, what they are. You've done a great job today of answering all those questions for us, Joanne. So thanks so much for uh, being with us. We are, however, out of time. Sorry, we're unable to get to any more questions, but uh, I do want to give you one final reminder 
to join Joanne and me, as well as many other Gartner expert analysts for the Gartner Supply Chain Symposium and Expo coming up June 6th through 8th, 2022 in Orlando, Florida, and from 27th to 29th of September in 2022 in London, both the world's most important gathering of CSCOs and supply chain executives. Don't forget to register with the code GARTSCB for an exclusive discount. Also, be sure and join us in April for the next installment in Gartner and Supply Chain Brain's 2022 series, Five Keys to Unlocking Supply Chain Value in a Time of Crisis. We just heard about one. Next time, we'll be addressing the critical topic of supply chain planning. So, Joanne Joliet, thanks again for your great presentation. Audience, thank you so much for listening in and for your fantastic questions. So, everybody, have a great day. Thanks, Bob.